Welcome into our NFL Draft YouTube channel as we take a look at the latest Mel Kuyper 2024 quarterback rankings updated just before the end of the college football regular season. He's got 10 names. We'll go 1 to 10, break down the players, and mention some names not on the list. At number one remains Caleb Williams. He is still Mel Kuyper's number one player and this season certainly has not been one to remember for Caleb Williams from a win-loss perspective, in part because, well, that defense at USC isn't very good. But the overall numbers actually do, st do still look awesome for Caleb Williams. 68.6%, 3,000-plus passing yards, not as much success on the ground. He does still hold the ball longer than you would like. 41 touchdowns against eight total turnovers. Now, he has had a fumbling issue. He hasn't lost as many as you know the 50% rate might normally indicate. But overall, Caleb Williams, the Patrick Mahomes comps never should have happened. I tried to warn you guys, but he is still worthy of being a top pick in this year's NFL draft. Now, if you want more NFL draft coverage, you've come to the right spot. Like the video so I can prove to the bosses as the season winds down, we should give even more focus to this. Hit that like button right now. At number two, and I think you can absolutely make a strong case for Drake May at number two. And I would argue if you want someone to operate a little bit better in structure, Drake May might be a better piece for you. His season, his numbers don't necessarily pop off the page. There's a little bit of the Justin Herbertness going on right now for Drake May where his team is just not that good. Uh, he's actually made a bunch of impressive plays down the stretch in key moments, and his team might not be winning that much, but it's not because of Drake May. Uh, it's some of the defensive issues, some, some receiver drops mixed in there as well. Both of these guys are worthy of being quarterback one. I think there will be plenty of discussion as to who ends up going with that first assumed first overall pick. Who do you think ends up being QB1? CW for Caleb Williams or DM for Drake May? Sound off in the comment section. Number three is Shadur Sanders. And by the way, Mel has him at number five overall on his board. That has not changed in months now for Mel Kuyper. I think it's a little bit of an overreaction. There are a lot of sacks for Shadur Sanders this year. I think it's less that he's holding the ball too long, more that the Colorado offline is just, just not very good. And Again, your quarterback has to make your offensive line right to a certain extent, but very accurate. I, I like a lot of what I've seen. Colorado's fallen off after a fun start to the season. I don't think he goes pro. I know his, his dad has said he's not going to. Coach Prime said Shadur would stay. I think that makes a lot of sense. He'll be able to capitalize on NIL. And I don't think NFL teams view him as the fifth best player, or even QB3 maybe, like Mel Kuyper has him. So will Sanders go pro this year? It's the pinned comment on today's video. If the ad comes on YouTube, take advantage of it and go vote. Y for yes, N for no. A new number four, the big change from Mel. And I do think this is a good decision. It is Jaden Daniels out of LSU. Now he's a little bit older than what some of these other players end up being. Remember, in kind of a hilarious fact, uh, Jaden Daniels was throwing touchdown passes to Brandon Ayuk in, in college. I, I know, right? That, that sounds so wrong, but it, it is what's happened there. Uh, Daniels turns 23 later in December. He has put up unbelievable numbers this year. The passing numbers alone are super impressive. 72.6%, 3,500 yards, 36 touchdowns, four interceptions. Then you also throw in the fact that he's got 1,000 rushing yards and 10 scores on the ground. He was a five-year player in college. He spent three years at Arizona State that we didn't even show his 2019 stats because there's only room for four because uh, most college guys, I think the COVID rule stuff makes it weird. He only played four games in 2020 uh, for Arizona State. I think there's some, some rationale to Jaden Daniels not just winning the Heisman Trophy but also getting some fair buzz for being a, a late-round pick. Now, he's a little bit older. I don't think the arm is crazy impressive. There are moments, I just want you to slide down, Daniel. Stop being so reckless out there. But for mid to late round one pick, I don't think it's that much of a stretch. Middle things should go on day two, despite his very slender frame. So will Daniels end up being a first round pick? One for yes, two for no. Go ahead and sound off for me in the comments section right now. Today's show is made possible by Odds R. What if there was a sports betting app that used 
uh, AI and machine learning to suggest smarter bets? Well, there is, folks, and it's called Odds Are. Download the app, sign up for an account, and let the latest data analysis guide you through today's point spreads, money lines, over-unders, etc. It's very simple to use. If you see green, that means it is a smart bet. And you take a look at what they did. Two big noteworthy green plays last week. Niners to cover the spread against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And Bears to cover the spread against the Lions. The Bears staying near pulled off the upset altogether, and the Bucks had very little, or the Niners had little issue against Tampa. Green means go. Take those bets, and you'll typically come out on top. You can find the Odds Are app in the App Store or the Google Play, and you guys get a free 30-day trial of the app when you go to oddsr.com slash NFL Daily to download the app. Link will be in the comments section and the description of today's show. It's oddsr.com slash NFL daily. Odds are doesn't take your bet. It just makes you better at them. Number five is J.J. McCarthy, who I have said has been my quarterback three uh, for a while now. The overall play has been solid. He's been very accurate. A bunch of great third down plays for Michigan. You know, almost 74 completion percentage. Doesn't turn the football over very much. But the issue for McCarthy has been the last couple of weeks. Now, he's had some weird games. mixed in. He wasn't as good against Purdue. Kind of still for 300 plus yards. There were some misthrows, no touchdowns. It's fine. Uh, did not throw a pass in the second half against Penn State. Which, I, you know, Michigan's job is to win football games. They won the game. They did their job, right? But it was not great for an eval purposes of J.J. McCarthy. Uh, he also then didn't do a great job against Maryland. He's 19 of 31 for 201 on interception in his last two games. That's kind of troubling. Fair or not, this upcoming game against Ohio State is going to go a, a probably disproportional amount towards his eval. If he lights up Ohio State, he's right back in there. If he struggles, ah, you know, maybe, he should, maybe he should go back to school. Who knows? One player who won't be going back to school is Bo Nix. I want to give Bo Nix a lot of credit because I was rather mean to him at Auburn, which I was right to be. He was not good at Auburn. He was a sub-60% completion guy, threw for a bunch of yards in basically three years starting, had a barely 3-1 to one touchdown to turnover ratio. That's not very good. Ran it pretty well. Then he goes to Oregon, and the man's got a 75% completion percentage, um, almost as many yards in 10 fewer games. The rushing efficiency is way up. And a near 10 to 1 touchdown to turnover ratio. He's not fumbled, lost the fumble, I should say, and in his, in his time at Oregon. He has been awesome. I don't know if Bo Nix will end up being a true first round pick when he turns 24 before the draft. That is old for a quarterback. Because remember, the way I think about it is to, to put this in perspective, you know, JJ McCarthy, we're talking about, ah, you know, he's still inconsistent, needs some work to do. JJ McCarthy's 20. Uh, he's. He is three years and change younger than Bo Nix is. So imagine where McCarthy's going to be in three years. And you see a player that was better at Michigan and McCarthy than the Knicks was at Auburn. And now you see why age and breakout stuff tends to matter a little bit for NFL draft prospects. Michael Penix out of Washington is also on this list. The big thing for him, in addition to also being 23 and turning 24 around the draft, is going to be the medicals. Uh, I've been pretty impressed with him this year at Washington. The last couple of games, some accuracy issues kind of start to rear their ugly head. There are the, the, He's a great deep ball thrower. Some of the more intermediate accuracy, I think, can kind of tend to, to come and go. He does get bailed out by an unbelievably good supporting cast at, uh, at receiver. But when he's at Kellen uh, DeVore as, as his head coach slash play caller, he's been awesome. Medical must check out. Otherwise, you could have a Hendon Hooker type si situation here on your hands. Who will be quarterback three in this class? Is it Sanders if he goes pro, Daniels, McCarthy, Knicks, Penix, somebody else altogether? Get your answers in for me in the comments right now. Number eight is Quinn Ewers out of Texas. I still don't know what to make of him. I kind of hope he doesn't turn pro because I don't want to deal with the evaluation right now, <laughs> which is what I said about Anthony Richardson, and I eventually got on board, but that was a, that was a, a, a tough one too. He's been better this year. Make no mistake, he's been better across the board. But look, footwork in general is a very personal thing. Like, it's what you're comfortable with. Can you repeat it? Can you be consistent with it? 
I hate his footwork. Yeah, it just, I, it's just, I think it's really not sloppy, but I, it's just, it's not what I like to see out of quarterbacks. But I think it leads to inconsistency in his deep ball. He's had a great, great one against Bama. Inconsistent beyond that. Number nine, and unfortunately, this was done for Kuiper before the gruesome leg injury that Jordan Travis suffered. I liked him. I don't know if he was going to be a franchise quarterback. I think he was going to be a good backup and still can be a good backup. He's led FSU to great success. Now, he's definitely benefited from Keon Coleman stepping up and making some big plays. Uh, and, you know, Johnny Wilson, as they've got some fun transfer guys in their credit to that coaching staff. Again, aged in this year, he's 23, turns 24 in May. So getting an older player coming off an injury, uh, maybe he still gets drafted. I think he can hang around the NFL for a while as a backup quarterback. Team clearly, clearly responds to him, too. Now, if you love our NFL Draft YouTube videos, make sure you are subbed to our NFL Draft channel. Don't miss out. Hit that sub button right now. Number 10 is Tulane's Michael Pratt. He has been banged up this year, and it's a little bit unfortunate that that's been the case because uh, he's a good football player. And what I like to see in general, this, this kind of stems a little bit from, from the Bill Parcells mindset, which is it's outdated now with the way college football works. His mindset was three years as a starting quarterback. That's what he wanted to have on with the guys he drafted. Pratt checks off those boxes, and he's gotten better every season. The yards have gone up. The completion percentage has gone up until this year with, with the injuries, of course. The touchdowns have gone up, and I think pro-rated they would have been pretty good there. So Pratt is a draftable quarterback. Make no mistake about it. That is Mel's top 10. Who did he leave off the list? Sound off for me in the comment section as I break down some names I think Mel could have at least snuck in to his top 10. Let's talk the Georgia quarterback, Carson Beck. Uh, I think maybe it's fatigue of Georgia. It's not wanting to deal with another quarterback and just being overlooked because you haven't really seen him play at all. I have been very impressed by Carson Beck this season. Now, Lad McConkie is an awesome football player. Uh, Beck's completing 73% of his passes, 3,000 yards, 21 touchdowns, five interceptions. I don't think we should be sleeping on Carson Beck. I don't know if he's even going to go pro, although he is five years younger than Stetson Bennett. <laughs> Let that sink in for a second. But I think this is a sleeper candidate for the QB3 race. Unfortunately, in part because of injuries, this has not been the Riley Leonard breakout season I was hoping for. We'd seen flashes in the past, and this year, the numbers are not very impressive. Seven total scores. He's actually done more on the ground in touchdowns than he has through the air. He's had interceptions. Injuries have been a real problem there. I was excited about Leonard. You know, he has, a, has that great win against Clemson, then ends up getting hurt, and he did it through the air, or on the ground, by the way. I need to see more passing consistency out of Leonard. I've been Honestly, big, big stock down this year for me, unfortunately, for him. Cameron Ward has some fans out there over at Washington State, and I just, I've never been on board with, with Cameron Ward. The, the numbers are fine. They're draftable, don't get me wrong, but this, like, sleeper first-round pick, I just, I never got in. He began the year great, by the way. 4-0 his first team, 13 touchdowns, zero interceptions. He's since gone 1-6 with nine touchdowns and five INTs this year. He also leads college football in coverage. There are accuracy issues and turnover issues, and that just scares me. Oh, Spencer Rattler, what are we going to do with you? Uh, he's going to get drafted. I think where he goes is going to be essential, as he'll be a 24-year-old rookie. Uh, he's been better this year for South Carolina, by the way. Cut down on the turnovers, a bit more accurate. Uh, I think the... I think he's matured for the Gamecocks, too, which was a real issue at Oklahoma and in high school, et cetera. That was the vibe uh, going out. Just need to see a little bit more. Upside's still there, but do you? But it's different when it's a you know 20-year-old upside and a 24-year-old rookie upside. It, it just caps how much room you can actually go. And then there's Tyler Van Dyke. I fell for it again, Chris. I, I, I made the same damn mistake. I, in 2021, exit the year, I'm like, oh, I, I, I kind of like Van Dyke. I, I saw a lot of stuff. I'm like, he's going he's gonna to take a big-time step forward. Uh, he could be a sleeper round one pick. And then he was bad in 2022. And then he was good to start this season. And then nicked up, got benched, came back in as a starter, and has not played well enough. Um, so I, I, I fell for the Tyler Van Dyke again. That's, that's just on me. 
Other quarterbacks I want to make note of, I don't know if K.J. Jefferson is going to be a real NFL quarterback or it would be kind of more of a, a, you know, I know my guy Chase wants to make him into a, a Taysom Hill type. That might be asking a little bit too much uh, from that perspective. Big guy, though, you know, has a shot at it. Joe Milton's got a cannon for an arm, but has just never been consistent enough to justify it. Uh, Sam Hartman is going to be 25 years old as a rookie. Uh, he just might be too old. Hey, DJ Uyungle has been better at Oregon State. Got out of Clemson there. Devin Leary is going to get a camp shot as well, but he's, he never had the breakout year that we thought was going to be last year uh, for Kentucky.